call to order the meet commissioners meeting on Wednesday, July 28th, 2021. And it is uh, 9.09. I'll close to it. Um, would everybody join me in the pledge? 9.07. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Um, we have any additions to the agenda? Melissa just told us about they're coming at 10? Yes. A nonprofit, nonprofit, a non-public. Have non a lot of nonprofits in my folder here to go over. But, um, a non-public, and I believe it would be C. Under C. At some point. Okay, we have uh, approval of the minutes. Matthew's reading them. Me too. Joe, I have a pair of glasses, and I'd let you have them, but. If I got you have them, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can each borrow a lens. Here's a monocle. <laughs> Matthew, any um, questions about the minutes? No. No? No, I think we're good. Okay. Commissioner Tazari, any? Questions on the minutes? No, Madam Chair. Okay. Things are good. Motion to approve the minutes. Second in, Madam Chair. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> aye, aye. Signature line on this. Right. No. <laughs> I can say we could use this one, but I already have this draft on it. No. Oh, third page. Yeah, oh. dragged on. Dragged on. Okay. So we must have a bunch of non-public uh, minutes that we need to go through, don't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Many sets, yes. Okay. One of these days. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any media questions? Seeing none. Okay. Any public input? Can I, I think we do. Can I, oh, can okay. I say something? Yes, you certainly may. Introduce uh, yourself, please. This is Julie Dolan. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Your question? Um, this is Julie Dolan from Sandwich. I'm not sure if this is the time for this, but we had sent the county at your suggestion at the last meeting. The town of Sandwich submitted a request to you for funding um, from the ARPA funds that the county received for um, broadband for the town of Sandwich, to, and I know you received that. We um, we had checked recently with Ms. Siemens on the status of that, um, so I wondered if you had any update for us. Um, I don't have that proposal or letter in front of me uh, right now, um, but I was bring, going to bring it up earlier, later, Today, um, we have um, a bunch of course requests um, that we want to go over, and I would like to next week invite um, anyone that submitted a request to come in and talk to us in person. Um, so I don't know if that's something that you'd be interested in, and we will 
uh, put that out um, today if we can arrange that to have everybody come in next week. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Okay. That would be fine. Sure. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Well, we'll so will Ms. Cena contact us yes. on the time and date? Yeah. Date. Yeah. So, next Thursday. And that will be next week, you said? Um, yeah, I'm thinking that we'll do a separate meeting day, maybe on Wednesday. Because there's a lot. There's a lot of them. Okay. And, and not have it in our regular meeting, because it will we'll be here till after dark. No, that's, <laughs> that's great. Yep. The, um, yeah, we weren't informed of that. So that no, would be great. Nobody yep. has been. It was just a, just a thought that, that we came up with today, because we got so many requests, new requests this week. Um, that it would be nice to give people the opportunity to come in and talk to us about it also. So. Great. Okay. Right, yep. Just keep us posted and we will be there. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. The manifest, the check manifest. Um, let me see if I have the... For January to July 21st is eight hundred and sixty eight thousand three hundred and sixty five dollars and seven cents and the payroll for that week was two hundred and seven thousand four hundred and seventy six dollars and three cents Transfers, we have none. No. Okay. Um, Hale's location. I have nothing for Hale's location unless you do, uh, Madam Chair. Um, we do. I wrote. Did you other you two commissioners get the email from um, the town clerk? No. Yes, you did. Today? No. Did you, Joe? Yes, I did. Okay. This okay. is relative to the um, bonding. The bonding. Yes. What is the town first name, Jim? Pardon? It's Denise Layton. Denise Layton. I don't see an email from Denise. Is it on my? Oh, maybe she didn't. She sent it to you and I. No, I didn't. I'm I didn't, sorry. I didn't receive. No, it. you didn't. Uh, okay. Maybe. Um, okay. Well, let me give you a synopsis here. Okay. Um, the insurance company is asking um, Denise for a lot of personal information, which I never had to give as being bonded. Mm -hmm. um, they want tax... Um, tax returns, tax financial returns, statements. Financial statements. Um, and I, Denise is not, does not think that she should have to do that give up all of that personal information okay. to be bonded. So, um, and Denise, I see you're on there. Would you like to speak on that? Yeah, can you hear me? You can. Yeah, I just, I'm very uncomfortable sending my tax returns and all that to the insurance company. You sent out to all these insurance companies to bond. All my personal information is on that tax return. Is there, Madam Chairman? Yes. Is there a way to redact, like your social security number? I, I'm not sure they're looking for your personal information. I'm, I think they're looking to ensure you're not a financial risk. So I wonder if we could redact certain aspects of your personal information that might make you feel more comfortable about sending this, such as your social or your address, your physical address, or is there a way to meet in the middle? Just I don't know. Thought. They, they, they want me to do this application that I have to put everything I owe on how much I pay each month, and, you know, it, it's like, it, it's a lot of information they want. Madam Chair, if I may? Yes. Yeah, it seems to me that the bonding company is asking for this information in order to make sure that if anything should happen, that they can go back and collect it from 
Denise. Uh, Denise directly. I find that uh, I, I certainly understand the bonding company's issue that way, but I've never seen this in all my years of banking, of bonding, or anything. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, I'm wondering if there's a way to make Denise an employee of the county and she could fall under our bonding issue. There is one. Mm -hmm. I, don't know that, I don't know that there's a way to do that immediately. I don't know. That's something we'll have to check with. Yeah. Um, I know it's at one really point they, want, they were intended to do that. Well, Denise, we'll, um, we'll have to discuss this with, with our insurance company, I would see, and see if we, can, if we can do that. That would be, I guess, okay. The bonding is a statutory requirement? Yes. Okay. So, well, we'll keep working on it. We'll work on it. We'll keep working on it. I, I think the concerns are valid. So. Which is, if I may, Madam Chair. Yeah. It, it's unfortunate because it certainly sounds like, and, and I know that's not the intent, but it certainly sounds like they're concerned that Denise may not be bondable. Yeah. Or have the financial wherewithal to be bondable. And I, I find that somewhat ludicrous because that in, uh, casts a, a shadow on her uh, record, if you will, and Great. I, don't I don't think, think that that's... should be the case. Well, um, unless laws have changed. I mean, I'm, I'm personally bonded because of another situation uh, for a million dollars and I didn't have to give them any information nothing mm -hmm. to my yes, dollars it was. so um, I think this is it's insurance is what it's it insurance. is right yeah so okay Denise we'll see what we can do for you thank you everything else okay at Hales uh, yeah other than um, I got an email the other day the DOE 25 that you already signed, they changed the form, so I have to redo that. So I'm going to look at it today. Um, other than that, all the taxes are in, and we're in good shape right now. Good. Well, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Okay. Treasurer's report. Um, let's see. I do have the... Um, June bank reconciliations, I just received those this morning. They look fine. I also have the quarter end for June 30th financials. Um, I received those this morning. Um, I've given the commissioners a copy. I haven't had a chance to look at them yet, but uh, I suspect um, they're fine too, but again, I haven't looked at them. As far as the uh, 2020 audit update, uh, I'll defer to uh, Madam Chair again. I did speak with the auditor um, <coughs> yesterday, and she is um, working on the draft. So we should have the draft within the next 10 days. So keep our fingers crossed. She's, you know, she's a little upset that we have gone past our June date that we wanted to have it done. It couldn't be helped. She's uh, changing a lot of things in our the way that we do our accounting, and that's led into various other problems. So, but it, we should have it within the next ten days. And that's all I have to say about the audit. Joe, anything else? I have nothing else, Madam Chair. Okay. I assume we'll go over the June numbers next week when everybody has a chance to really look at them. So this is for January through June? Yeah. Quarter end. Quarter. And this is line by line yeah. expenditures for each line item? Is that basically this is a... Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't realize Based on the budget? Yes. Okay. I do know that there are two lines that are um, out of whack, and that is because um, there has not been an executive meeting of the delegation yet to approve line item transfers. Is that for the jail? Yes. Okay. So they are, they're aware of that. That was expected. That was expected, so. Yeah, because of the change. I will tell the commissioners that's in a little bit different format than what you usually get. Next week, I believe, you'll get that format.
So uh, next is the uh, credit card registry fee. Lisa, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. So last week I introduced the uh, topic of expanding our our credit card offerings uh, to transfer tax and L chip surcharge fees. And Commis Commissioner Tassari asked me how many counties accept credit cards at the registries. And there are two. Currently we do for recording fees and copy fees and for paying bills. Uh, we don't do it for transfer tax and L chip. And Merrimack County also accepts credit cards. They do not do for L chip or transfer tax as well. Reason being, um, the concern over who's going to follow through and collect if anybody fails to or contests the payment. So I looked into the indemnification with the current vendor and I looked into the state of New Hampshire. The state of New Hampshire is, um, so the current vendor has a great track record. They say that they indemnify the county completely unless it's a stolen credit card and then they ask the sheriff's department and the county attorney to help them collect, make the collection. Mm -hmm. And using a stolen credit card to pay for transfer tax or L chip transactions on a real estate transaction seems like a, a far-fetched idea to me, but I, I'm not making the call on that one. You guys are. so. Um, so then I looked into the state of New Hampshire because they're initiating a, what they call the Granite Tax Connection, which is a, an online portal to pay for all kinds of taxes with the state of New Hampshire. So I wondered who their vendor was. And I was able to connect with their merchant card administrator down in Concord and they have a uh, contract with a bank, I forget which bank it is, a 118-page contract um, where they, they feel like they're completely indemnified for, for any kind of chargebacks. The bank absorbs all of that. And they want to ask municipalities and counties to buy into joining with them, which would lower their rate of offering for taxpayers. And right now their rate is less than what the current vendor is. The current vendor is 3% and theirs is 2.3. And they're trying to expand the program. They accept payments for all kinds of taxes. They accept the liquor store payments. Um, and the state of New Hampshire is comfortable with this contract. I'm looked it over and be glad to send it to you if you would care to look at it and think about whether we want to move forward with either or or stay the way we are. It would just be an additional service to offer to people at the front counter. I think it would be a, a good thing to do um, and that's all I have to say about it. Questions? Yeah, how large um, are the costs that we're, are the fees that we're talking about? What's Transfer tax yeah. is $15 per thousand of purchase price. Okay. And currently the state has a limit of how much they will accept by credit card. And they make exceptions. And she gave me the uh, example. For instance, Pike Industry comes to register all their vehicles. And their limit is 999000. So, and they have to um, waive that limit for certain vendors when they come to do everything all at once. Um, I'm not sure we would want to have that same limit, no. but that's what the state of New Hampshire does. Okay. I know some towns are, have gone to credit cards and they'll, they'll put in a limit of maybe $500. Transfer tax can can get pretty big. Yeah, that's what my concern is. Yep. And but having a check is, is the best way to do it, especially if something's that big. 
I, I don't know why whoever's doing it can't go and get a check. I, I get, that's kind of my feeling. You know, it's not something you do every day. It's unless not. you're a professional that does it every day. And then you have a system in place for doing it. Mm -hmm. you know, it'll come out of escrow funds. It'll, you know, and for big closings, I completely agree with you. Yeah. I, I, I don't think people would want to pay the 2.3% on a million dollar property. Um, and yet this, this information is bigger for the county than just the registry of deeds. We could be accepting all payments through this umbrella with the state of New Hampshire and, and be accepting credit card payments and not have to deal with individual checks and... And, and who pays the fee? The taxpayer pays the fee. Okay. And what we find at the registry is people come in and they don't have three checks on them. Um, and so we accept the recording fees and any any uh, copy fees through mm -hmm. credit cards. And they pay their 3% to them is nothing. Yeah. For a big real estate transaction, it would be something to think twice about. Yeah. But for LCHIP, which is $25 per uh, transaction, I'm inclined to think that it makes sense to accept a credit card for that. It's, mm -hmm. it's a limited amount of money. Um, even up to a higher limit than that, I think it would make sense. But this is ultimately your decision as to whether the county wants to... I'm concerned about the transfer tax. Can I ask a question? Yes, you may. Um, so would they be swiping their card three times so we would know which money was going to the L chip, which money was, or would they be doing it in one... This isn't that the purpose of the three checks, so it's clear where the money's going from an accounting perspective? That is the purpose of the three checks. And I've asked the vendor and asked the vendor to talk with DRA about whether or not this would matter in terms of collections. And they say that collections would all be handled by the bank. And so they like that. They DRA right now currently if we get a chargeback, we send it to DRA, and DRA has to f track it down. But using credit cards, it all falls on the shoulders of the bank. Right, but if we're... So the money... If we're accepting debit cards, do we have to scan it three times? One for the $25 L chip, one for the transfer tax, and one for the recording fee? I would say the answer, in my mind with what they've told me, is no, once. So is that going to create some kind of accounting nightmare? Because how will you know? Oh, we know. We have it all broken down when we record a document. <coughs> know, but then it won't match. So if you can do that on a credit card, why do we take three checks in? Because the county doesn't want to be following through on bounced checks. We follow through on bounced checks that are for recording fees or copies, which um, I raised the... Uh, rate for NSF funds and it hasn't been happening lately. But the state follows through on the L chip and the transfer tax bounce checks, which again, it doesn't happen. Uh, but if it were to happen, there was one instance in one of the southern counties where one, a big check bounced and the state was holding the county liable and that's when the policy of having the three checks came into place to to identify exactly what the monies were going for. But that's because the state was responsible for the collection. But now the state wouldn't be responsible for the collection. The money would go directly to the state. And if it's a chargeback, it charges back to the bank, not to the state. It doesn't ever leave the state. And we're sure that if we use a credit card, that chargeback is going to be done by the bank and not we're not going to be responsible for it? That's what I've been told. And I've been told it from both of the vendors that it's the bank's responsibility. And the contract is pretty clear. With the current vendor, he asked for our assistance in tracking down the data so that he can then go after the taxpayer. Um, with the state, I imagine they would do the same, that they would want the reason that there was money given to us. But that's a simple matter of printing out a receipt from the transaction. And every transaction we take in, take in 
is itemized as to everything on it. So uh, I'm open to the idea of coming under the state umbrella, if that's how they're doing it. I, d I think we should explore that. Would you like me to send you a copy of the contract? I think so. I'd be glad to do that. 118 pages, I do warn you. <laughs> and there are... <laughs> Hopefully there's a sanity clause. <laughs> Probably on the last, last page. <laughs> I, I will do that. Okay. There's no hurry on this, but okay. to me it seems like an opportunity, if it, if it works out that we really have no liability as a county, mm -hmm. it seems like a no-brainer because the taxpayers just, are going to benefit. It's just that, um, are we getting a lot of bounced checks? Not now, because I have a hefty NSF fee okay. on any and that so, comes through. And, and most of the, are the transactions mostly uh, individuals or are, uh, who's writing the checks? Are they law firms or? It's both. It's really a mix. It's a if, it's an, mix if it's a big dollar transaction, it, it goes through the professional law firms. Okay. If it's a family transaction or a small transaction, people bring them in on their own. They're not really using them on their own. And 30% of them come in over the counter or by mail. So it would only be in relation to those. Mm -hmm. Now, we already accept the other 70% through vendors e-recording. Okay. And that is a similar situation if one of those were to happen, who's responsible for... Mm -hmm. it, nobody has the right to take money back from Carroll County. Okay. And I think that's the same with both of these agreements. But if a check bounces, we don't get the money. No, we get it. We still get we it. We get it. Okay. And they have no right to take it back. Okay. But who is the one who is liable for the, um, the collection. collection is the question. It's the big question, I think, that Carroll County doesn't want to get involved in. If the bank does take full responsibility for that. Are we doing collections now? I do collections on copies and um, uh, recording fees. Okay. But I haven't had any recently in the past couple of years. Have you ever had to use a collection agency? To... No. Okay. No, we badger them ourselves. <laughs> and it was only at the beginning that we had that problem. And now it's it's a lot better. So it's not an urgent issue right now? No. Okay. We are opening some new RFPs here for the land records management system, which depending on uh, which one works for us, would be built into it. Okay. So I would like to build that option in if we uh, decide to go there. Okay. If there's only two counties right now that are doing this, I don't mind not being you know, in the forefront since we are Carroll County. I, you know, we're doing it the way that works. And, so we don't have an urgent problem. So. I'm just going to take you a few days to read through that contract. Could you send me the contract as well? <laughs> I would be glad yeah, to sure. send it to all of us. I think you, the finance office might be interested in this as well. Okay. In, in sense that they, they, you know, the water department and, uh, you know. Okay. Thank um, you. Sure. Yeah, that would add a complication on how things are going in the finance office. Well, we could talk to the auditor. Maybe it would streamline the process. It, I, I think it does streamline the process. Okay. Thank you. So you'll send out the contract to all of us? And I will. And to finance? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And we have some RFPs to open or some bids. It looks like we need a weapon to do with. No. Chair, we'll give it to Matthew. I know he has a weapon. I don't Jeez. have my knife. You don't have your knife? Should I go find one? This one it's nice and light. Ed has a knife. Ed, Ed do you have a knife? Sorry, you're not authorized to use my knife. No, you can use it, can't you? Ed, could you open this for us? Oh, jeez. No, I don't have my knife. He doesn't have his knife. Oh, I don't have my 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 knife.
There was a big letter open. I have a nice well, the silver one. I don't know where it went. Stuff. I've got a paper. You can do a lot with it. You know, you can get out of handcuffs with a paper. <laughs> wait, oh, wait. Let me see it. Like, this is... Oh, you got a little knife there. But don't do, like, all Amazon boxes? Like, does no one that order from Amazon? That one's double tape. Oh, look at that knife. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Does this one go to Madam Registrar and the original well, stays with yeah. us? Yeah. So, oh, these are different though. One year, three year, yeah, five is... year. This is all original. Yep. These are all original. Looks like a lot of detail. These are all original. This is the original one. And I don't think mine said original anywhere. So we have one from AIT LLC in Leesburg, Virginia. Cover letter here. Wow. Did you did, did you not have a fourth one, Madam Chair? No. You only had three. No, they're in here. I got two in here. Oh. We have one from Avenue. Hold on here, you're getting me confused. So I gave you that one. Here's yours. Thank you. Here's mine. And yours is the other copies. Set go. Copy two. That's copy two. Yeah. We, uh, is this for me, Madam Chair? No, I gave you one, and then there were I two know, extras. It says one, five, and ten years. These are all different. Yep. So you have copy ones over there. Here's copy one. Yeah, I... Give her copy one. Okay. Let me just work through this. Okay. So you have copy one there. Yep. Get that to her. Keep copy one together. We'll keep copy two together. But and none of them say... Over, oh, yeah. Copy three together. Here. Yeah. So, and it looks like and this company, this copy mine four. killing trees. Well, so they're all labeled. Okay. Okay. So there's multiple parts yep. to the proposal. Where is copy four? Copy four is here. Could I have copy four, please? Does Madam Chair have a copy? No. no. Do you have copies two and three? Yeah, I'll take my copy three. It looks Madam like Registrar. I have copy two, and you have copy one. I do, and okay. Madam Registrar has copy four, original. and the original, that's a pile of originals. Oh, wow. So we all, can you put plus this back, four. please? Thank you. Um, we all have a copy, and there's a pile of originals. And then I have the copies of these two as well. Okay. Right. 
We all have a copy. The three of us have a copy. Madam Registrar has a copy, and then there's a pile of originals, okay. which are right. They get some. Those must be the ones that I have to scanned in, in or yeah. Yeah. held by someone more responsible than the scribe. So, and this one's from Fiddler? Yes, yours is from Fiddler. Mine is from Avenue, and Madam Chair's is from AIT. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what do we have to do now, Madam Chair? Read something? All right. This so is too much to read. Well, all you need to do is just write the year that to the Okay. Here, it might okay. Shall I go so first? Just summary, really. Oh, there it is on this one, the front page. Okay. That was nice of them, Madam Chair. I see. So I'll go with this. This is AIT LLC from Leesburg, Virginia. And their one year contract is $240,000 for permanent software license, one year maintenance, and support contract included. Three year contract is $200,000 year one, $40,000 per year for years two and three, includes maintenance and support. Five-year contract is $170,000 year one, $27,500 per year for two, three, four, and five, includes maintenance and support. Ten-year contract, same as five-year contract, years six through ten, indexed to CPI. I'm indexed sure that you know what CPI. all that means, Lisa, because I have no clue. Consumer price yes, index. Yep. So that's not the real cost. It would be indexed right. in future years. So um, it looks like uh, Fiddler did it differently because there's no total. It's uh, uh, it looks like it's per document, and and there's there's a cost per month. Uh, cost per quarter, and then there's a cost per duplicate. So um, maybe the details, someone's going to have to go through and yeah. figure this out. But they're proposing 230 per recorded document in year one, 234 in year two, 237 in year three. Uh, and then in the five year, there, it caps at 237 in year three. And so year four and five will also be 237. Uh, $1,800 a month uh, for remote access, looks like. Um, there's some other details. It's hard to really. I guess this is a different sort of proposal. Or mm -hmm. Is that what you were looking for? It's very complicated, the system. Oh, they have a 10-year proposal, too. It looks like. So year 10 would be 245. Year, years 8 through 10 would be 245. Year six would be 240, and year seven at 243. So, so the next one, the one I have is from Avenue. They indicate they do not offer one-year contracts, so they've provided pricing for three, five, and ten years. Um, it says the county elects not to charge for viewing or printing. It will be a $200 per month for the term of the contract. Um, then it looks like it says for the Clearview 2020 system, it's um, $3,630. Um, for the three years, $3,260. For the five years, and then the 10 years, $3,150. But then it says for the U.S. land records, it's a 50-50 revenue share, um, which I'm not sure what that means. but.
I need to study these. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, <'cause... laughs> and then come back to us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It won't be today. No. <laughs> Do you want me to take the originals? I have them yeah. so I can scan them. They're over there. So you have the, I have copy four. Copy four? Okay. Do you want to swap? Sure. Did you get this letter? You got another one of these. Oh, the same as I did? A crazy letter. Yep. I didn't get one. Good. You can have mine if you want. Nope. Mm -hmm. It didn't come with this, did it? No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. Do you want to box in? It, it, if at the end of the evaluation of this, we could gather these all back up and keep them, because the past one that I did in 2015, we are referring to every day and it's nice for the staff to have that as a guide so when we're on the phone we can say this is in the RFP it needs to be okay. you know? so when you're all done just don't throw them out okay no we won't throw them out okay. Okay. thank you I don't think we throw anything out no okay so that's done are we doing anything I don't understand this I don't either from the we the people people Oh, we the people of the Republic for the United States of America. I would read it out loud. I don't. It doesn't. It's. They said Joe Biden isn't president. It seems he is. They say Joe's uh, not the treasurer, too. So. Yeah, well, that's understandable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was elected for the square. Right. Other business? We have Primex refund. We did that last week. I don't have a record of a vote, Madam Chair, so I just oh, wanted to see. The vote was, um, I think it was three to, three to zero to um, leave it for next year's, to come off next year's. It is, I'm voting it's Melissa now. Roll yeah. it over. I don't have a vote, but I have an email that we collectively sent to Kathy. I just voted to yeah. you. Okay. I'd say roll it over. Yeah. yeah, that's what we did. Okay. Do we need an official vote, though? Sure. We, I thought we did, but yeah. it was... In case we didn't, do we want to do so it? I make a motion. We roll it over. Okay. Seconded. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So, just for clarification, to roll it over means to reduce the amount owed in 2022. Yep. Okay. You just take that amount off. Okay. Thank you. And we don't need a line item transfer. <clears throat> so last year, I just wrote a letter to Primex, the three commissioners signed. Do you want me to do that again for next week? <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, and then the New Hampshire DH HHS transfer of public funds agreement. We talked about this last week, and you wanted to wait till this week to make a decision. Uh, it has to be in by August 18th. Kathy wants to know is um, her name was on it last year um, and uh, our CFO changed it to his name so she wants to know whether we want to we want name to be on it or just leave it in her name or if we done it in the past if she was on last year it's just standard what is it then sir? That's right, you, you probably weren't you're on this part of it last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not finding my copy. Well, we, we should have, an, I think Melissa put a new one in this week's. Did I she? didn't, Madam Chair. Oh, you didn't? I didn't no, I just it. put it in yours. Oh, okay. I gave you yours back because I had scanned it. Oh, okay. So this we, is for the nursing home. Yes. Why wouldn't it be Paula? Or D. 
I think we talked about D. Do you want to look at this? Yeah. I think we talked about maybe having it D, unless it has to be because it's still for the county. Because it does say the county will transfer. But D is an employee of the county, just yeah. like I don't see Kathy why is. D wouldn't do this. Is D on there? She was. She is. She is. D, can you hear us? I can hear you, yes. Okay. Would this be something that, that you would sign? What is the form? It's the Intergovernmental Agreement Regarding Transfer of Public Funds from the Nursing Home Per Diem and CFI Waiver Payments. Yeah, I would sign that. Okay. Is the amount correct? I'd have to look at it and compare it and double check it with whatever um, documentation we have here. Okay. So, Madam Chair, I propose that we stay this till next week. We send a copy to D and we discuss putting D's name on it with the finance director to see if that's okay. going to create any issues before we okay. make a decision. We'll okay. get a copy of this over to you, D, okay? I just sent it. Okay. That sounds great. I'll look it over. If I have any questions or we need to talk about anything, we'll set something up. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do it next Thank week. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, well, that was quick. Okay, and annual report. Nothing? Nothing to I have nothing okay. to nothing? report. I, okay. I, I'm, I'm working near on it. done with okay. the commissioner's comments, but I don't see the need for a rush since we're going to be putting the audit in it and the audit's not done. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I would like the audit to be in it at this point. Because okay. we're so close to having the audit done. That's what I took away from our meeting two weeks okay. ago, is that you wanted to hold okay. it for that. So. Then we will go to commissioner's reports, and I will go first. I don't have any reports, but I have gotten in several other um, requests for ARPA money. We have the one from the Gibson Center. Um, we got one from Rick Hilliard this morning. Who? Rick Hilliard. The broadband oh, committee broadband wants committee. like $35,000. No, yeah. That's why I was... And whatever. Whatever. Well, I was confused. It doesn't take much. Um, <laughs> for any of us to get confused. Okay. Yes, they're asking for thirty thousand. I got one from Zachary Porter. Um, from Kingswood, sure. making a request. Um, um and. I emailed him back. He doesn't say what he wants. Um, he's just some programs that were uh, done away with because of COVID. Um, I told him to send us a proposal. To tell us exactly what he's talking about. You need specifics. Okay. Yeah. That, um, and I did meet with um, Caleb from the Carroll County Health Organization. He's very excited about um, teaming up with us. So he's writing up a proposal. Um, he needs quite a bit of space, though. He needs enough for uh, an office for four people and a storage space of about 600 square feet for all their storage for, for um, disaster you know, supplies. And they are able to pay a certain amount of rent. Oh, well, that's kind of nice. So that kind of nice. So I told him to write up exactly what he needed, what his proposal was, and. Um, then the other thing that I would like to do is to set up, if it's possible, maybe next Wednesday to have all these people come in and talk to us. Yeah. Because we have to have all our proposals in by the 18th. Okay. Um, give them a chance to come in and. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm asking for their proposals ahead of time, and then we can kind of look at it, and then they'll be here and tell us crystals. I, I do think we should set a time limit, Madam Chair. Yeah, I thought maybe like a half hour. Each? Yeah. 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 Each? Well, it depends how many there are. Well, I'm going to say we'll probably have. I think that's a long time. You do? You want to give them 15 minutes? We're just going to need a written submission, and then, yep. they, and uh, then they can uh, come. You know, a five or ten minute um, overview, and we could we could ask questions. I, my concern is if we get 20 people in, that's going to be. Well, that's why I wanted a separate day and not hours. on our regular meeting day. Are we opening this up to the delegation in case they want to sit through these proposals? It's a it's a public, it's a public meeting. meeting. Public okay. meeting. So I'm, yeah. So they I mean, can probably cover on their summer vacations. Yeah, I mean, oh. they'll get a chance to look at them anyway. 
you know, they're and writing the letters picture. to the paper and things yep. that they do. So, so. so um, if for you two are available, like for next, what day would be good? Our regular meeting is on Thursday next week, correct, Melissa? Yes. Why don't we do it after our regular meeting? Because yeah. I don't want to be here till midnight. Well, then you may give them five minutes, not, <laughs> not 30. We, we need our written submissions. So. Right. So I have several, but I've asked the other ones that have called me to get this in before next week. My feeling is they should do a written submission, and the presentation should be kind of a summary. Right. And we can have an opportunity to ask questions. So you want to have it on the same day? It, well, if they can get their submission in, you know, to get it to us, and we can have... I told them I had to be in before next Wednesday. Yeah, and then we can review it. And, um... You want to do next Wednesday, Madam Chair? I don't know. Matthew said he wants to do Thursday after our regular meeting. I can keep your agenda short. You want to do your regular one first? Just for an hour and then get into this? Yeah. What do you want to do? Either of those things works for me, Madam Chair. We have no department of report next week. So it should be pretty good. Sean will be back next week? Yes, yeah, Sean will be back, yeah. Because I know he had a contract he wanted to go through. Yep. And another um, issue. And yep. Uh, okay, if you guys don't mind, I, on Thursday, but I just don't want to be here until 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> Definitely not. No, we'll, we'll And we'll limit it to 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. I, that's, that should be plenty. I, I, especially if, we're, if there's a lot. Unless I'll try to give you a list of people so you can send it out. Okay. I, uh, and I've called me so far. I, did you receive this from the New Hampshire Electric Co-op? Yes, you all have that. That's in the... That in the was package. in last week's, right? That was from Sandwich? It's in your packet today. It is? So this is, it's no, in the I packet today, yeah. Well, basically what this is, is uh, the New Hampshire Electric Co-op, as everyone knows, is... Has, has decided to do provide broadband, <laughs> and it looks like it what looks it? like they're going to build yeah. in Sandwich first by early 2022. What is this energy buying service agreement? Yeah. What is this? Did you guys get this? Yes. That's what is that not for? no. That's Here's not. Source. That was our other. Did I get it? Oh, I have it. You can have my copy, Madam Chair. That's all right. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, I'm, you can have my copy, Madam Chair. Please <laughs> have my copy. It's saying that they will be providing high-speed Internet service by early 2022 in Sandwich. Right. Uh, throughout Sandwich by uh, fiber with speeds of 100 megabytes per second symmetrical or one gigabyte, which is a thousand megabytes per second, symmetrical. So that's the same upload and download. So broadband is defined as three up, 25 down, which is, you know, once you get to that speed, you're, you're broadband. They'll be getting a minimum of 100 up and 100 down, which is what I think is needed. That's how broadband should be defined, but they're going to be getting some pretty good service available. So, what is Sandwich want? I don't know. Okay. Um, I know Julie was on. Mm -hmm. Julie Dolan was on today, and yep, maybe she said she'd send us something next right. week. Yeah. Okay. So All the, right. But if New Hampshire Electric Co-op is providing this, yep. it then sounds they like they'll it. be covered, yep. and covered more quickly than we could do, or anyone else is going to be able to do. So, um, that's pretty good. I, I don't. They're going to have the best in the town. Thousand up and a thousand down is, is, is pretty good. I'll take your word for it, Commissioner Platch. Sounds like pretty good to me. And that's for $90 a month. That's, that's pretty good. You don't even, there aren't too many places where you can get that. We have anything else for commissioners? Okay, so we need to go. Do you have any non public Moser that you have on board, or just the one that? Uh, no. Okay, we okay. just have one then. Just have Bob Mor Murray and you source on right now for 10 o'clock. Okay, tell them to come in and then we'll do the non public after. Okay.
Good morning, Bob. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so what do you have for us? I have Maureen Callahan and Steve Berndorf from YouSource. Oh. Uh, uh, Maureen, good morning. Good morning. Maureen reached out to me and uh, uh, gave me a kick in the butt to get this process moving forward again. <laughs> um, last time we talked, Maureen had uh, suggested that we go to the next step forward, which was um, creating an ROI. And uh, the commissioners were going to indicated that they were in favor of signing off on that. So we're at that point. Uh, we're still in the discovery phase of phase of of uh, getting into any contracts. So the last two points on this discovery page I see are gauging the preliminary interest from a pool of reputable developers and uh, assisting with an internal go no go rationale. So I think, uh, Maureen, is, am I correct? Is that where we're at? So so we really, I think where we're at is more um, going, and I hope the sound is good in this room, um, it's really to talk about this particular proposal um, that has the you know, discovery phase, feasibility, procurement phase, and then the actual um, project management. And just to to understand your level of interest in engaging in a relationship like this with us, yeah, you know, we we are your procurement arm, but we also want to understand: um, do you have an interest at this point in having us actually take you through from discovery to a project management um, phase in the way that we have proposed it? And, and maybe and maybe we should talk about it a little bit first, if that would be helpful, because it might be the first time you're really getting a chance to look at this. So I think the discussion came about that, you know, some of the ARPA funds may be able to cover oh. green energy. So this is one of the things we were looking at, and we had asked Bob, you know, we're in, in the stages of prioritizing the use of this funds, you know, how much would it cost to do solar? And so Bob has um, brought us this proposal so we can decide if that's uh, going to be on the table for the use of, of funding. So I, I, I guess we have, Bob has his hand up, so maybe I'll defer to Bob, but I was thinking we had a couple of questions which were, how big would the solar field be? Where would it go and what would it cost? We're looking for like the basic info. But Bob, do you have something? Yeah, um, I think my opinion is that we have to finish the first two bullet points on the discovery phase. We have to, um, I, think we, I think we need to gauge the interest of, of any prospective contractors or developers. And uh, we have to decide based on that interest and a, pro, and a proper pro forma um, whether this is something that the county is interested in. I don't think the commissioners can make an intelligent decision without those two pieces of information. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Uh, and it looks like that, but why do we need a... Does, so... Hi, Mr. Steve. If, if I may, I'd be happy to provide some opinions based on, you know, 15 years of development work that I've done on what the economics would look like and, you know, the benefits to the county. Um, and I should just also point out that, um, you know, Maureen and I and NewSource, we're independent advisors. We don't, we're, we're, we're not building, we're advising, and we're just as happy to tell you not to move forward if we don't believe it makes economic sense on a risk-adjusted basis, right? How do you protect the interests of your constituents and citizens? And that's very important. Um, and, you know, to answer your question, Commissioner, um, we've spent out roughly, it would be about a two megawatt array, and there's some legislative issues that need to be overcome before that size system could be built. 
but you could go smaller or bigger, depending. Um, but on the unit economic basis, uh, the return to the county would be approximately seven to eight year payback. So if you're using your own general fund, about a seven, eight year payback, meaning that this will pay for itself, whatever size it is, in about seven or eight years. And the IRR, which is another financial metric, internal rate of return, effectively, if you could invest your money in the market and do better or worse, it's about 10%, right? So you're getting about a 10% return year over year over year on these investment, on this investment. And that's based on very conservative um, financial modeling, which, you know, we'd be happy to walk you through in more detail. Um, on top of that, then, uh, if you have uh, relief funds or infrastructure funds which can be used, that'll make things mm -hmm. better. And, you know, I'm a big fan, having done this for a long time, of municipalities owning their own systems because you get the long-term 25-plus year benefit. You're controlling your energy costs. It's a hedge against rising energy prices. There's a whole host of reasons why owning it is a good thing, I think. You don't have to do it that way. Um, and also, as a county with good credit, you have access to you know, bonding, green bonds, um, USDA funding. Like, there's a lot of different ways to finance this with very low-cost capital, which um, you know, your debt service will be covered, right? So it's a, it's a net positive cash flow for the county. Um, but again, in my professional opinion, the economics on a project like this uh, are very solid. Uh, largely that's driven by the cost of energy you pay today at a retail rate. Um, so let me pause there and I'd be happy to share more thoughts, you know, based on my experience and kind of um, perspective. What kind of space would we need? I would assume it has to be cleared. Yeah. And how um, much of it? You know, yeah, we sent over a rough drawing, and, you know, fortunately, two megawatts is not a very um, exceptionally large array. It's about four to five acres per megawatt, so two, two megawatts, let's say, would be ten acres, roughly. Um, you're blessed with a lot of land. There's a lot of different places we can put it or consider it. You want to make sure that it's close to the meter where it would be uh, flowing back into the grid and, and powering. Um, but roughly 10 acres for a 2 megawatt array. I, I just don't know the way we can there. do this. I will just call attention. There is a pro forma that Steve had created that actually has a diagram that's just a, suggest, a suggestion of where the array could actually be located. Um, and we'd be happy to forward that again so that everyone has that. Um, it was originated back in June, of, you know, June 18th. I remember that. I do remember seeing that, yeah. yeah. So the timing of this. So we can we can read that again. I, I guess the timing of this, um, if we were going to bond the costs, I mean we're not in a the, the timing isn't precipitous. If we're looking to use ARPA funds to pay for this, then we kind of have to do it quickly. And I don't know that we we uh, that this is an eligible project for ARPA. Uh, I, I, I think it is. It is. It's said in, in big, big green letters, green yeah. energy, green and energy. Yeah. Uh, approximately 15 towns in the state are using their entire ARPA money to do to it. Do so this, I don't yeah. think that's the consideration. I, think I don't that, know that we can answer these questions quickly enough, though. To, that's a separate concern, but whether or not it meets within the guidelines, it's, I, it's yeah, pretty the, clear I, that I, it does. I think the phase one work needs to be done in order to answer the questions about going forward, uh, if we could do, how quickly could that get done? So do we know what the cost of an array, like the diagram that was sent over, would be? Yeah. Roughly? roughly you know, it will depend on the, uh, the size and some of the construction considerations, but I think a fair conservative number Again, based on my 15 years of doing this, would be uh, about a buck, 
I think we, I estimated at a buck, did I say 30 or buck 50? So that's very, so about a buck 50 a watt. So a two megawatt system at a dollar 50 a watt would be, yeah, roughly $3 million. Okay. Um, but the number to use is about a dollar 50 a watt. So a megawatt would be a million five, two megawatts would be 3 million, and so on. Okay. And that's probably conservative. What would be the timing for completing yeah. construction? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? How quickly could it, what would be the timing for, for building if we went forward? We're doing yeah, that. you know, building a solar array is actually very easy. It's a construction project, two megawatts, if you have all the permits, the interconnection, the financing, everything lined up. Month or two, I mean, it, it won't take a long time. Typically, you'll try and slot it in so it's built in the spring or the, you know, after the mud and, um, you know, before the snow. So um, it's good to start planning early so you can get it into a, a developer or a construction company's queue and their slot plan. Um, but I think, you know, with respect to timing and how you think about this, you know, it's not like you sign a piece of paper and you go. You actually do the work, you run a feasibility analysis, which I think is very important. And you answer the question internally, um, does it make sense financially, right? Is this a good move for us as a community and our citizens? Are we being a good steward of taxpayer dollars? What are the benefits? What are the risks, quite frankly? Um, and then you start going through the process. And you can control any spend uh, that the county makes based on contract structuring and milestone payments, right? You're not going to write a check for this up front. You're going to do the work and you'll pay out, um, we sort of call it construction milestones to make sure that the work is being done appropriately, et cetera. So there's a lot of different ways to control uh, the risk, the financial risk. But I think more importantly is, um, you know, if you think a seven year payback with a 10% return uh, where you can cover the debt service on an asset that's going to last 25 years and create very low levelized cost of energy that's um, with a low degree of production risk, um, right? Those are the questions I think that if you're comfortable with those, it becomes much easier to move forward in a very controlled way. And, and hopefully that's what we would help um, the county work through. I guess, um, Bob, maybe, you know, if how quickly could we get the phase one questions answered? Well, I believe we're probably pretty close to answering them, quite frankly, right? So the, the phase one discovery, right, I, I would push back and say the client needs to bold. What are you trying to do, right? Like, I'd like to know more about that. Um, but the indicative costs and returns, I think the pro forma that we sent over is pretty close. I like to say we're in the ballpark. You know, at the end of the day, we don't know the answer until we go to the market and talk to developers. Um, the price of steel fluctuates, module pricing fluctuates, right? So there's going to be some variability. But I'd say within a 90 degree confidence level, um, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable that we're, you know, 90% of the way there. Um, then we want to talk about project structure financing options, right? How do you want to pay it? Is it relief funds? Is it financing? Is it municipal bonding? Right? And we can layer those costs in. Um, we can certainly answer questions, and I'm just reading off the scope. And then we've talked to developers in New Hampshire. I have uh, no doubt that if you want to pay somebody to build it, they will build it, and there's a lot of qualified vendors out there. And part of our role, which is a big part of it, is making sure that um, you're working with a reputable vendor who has the capacity, they're bonded and insured appropriately, they have access to subcontractors and crews, and more importantly, materials. And then when they say we want to build this thing in the summer of next year, that they've got a plan to go through the various phases of development or, yeah, I'm sorry, Mo pointed out 2023 when you're thinking about this, um, that you very methodically work through that plan and you make sure that that plan is adhered to, right? Because, um, and, so, and so part of the vendor selection, right, that would be our role helping manage that process. Um, and then really, you know, we're pretty close to, to having that first phase completed 
and it's more of a discussion like we're having today or in a working group to think through a lot of very specific detailed questions. Um, but, you know, we know that performer is a good indication at a high level of what your use of taxpayer funds would look like from a financial perspective. Bob, it looks like you had a comment. Yeah, and a question. Steve, can you definitively say whether or not this is a covered expense, a covered expense under ARPA? I cannot. I don't, I don't know that. I know historically they've been, the funds have been used. Um, but my guess is yes. Typically infrastructure, energy is included. At least it was in ARA, you know, a number of years ago. Um, but nevertheless, you know, we can also create that as a contingent milestone in any sort of planning, right? So we can say part of the preliminary work would be to determine if the funds are eligible, how to apply, what those timelines are. And quite frankly, if they're not included and you do not want to move forward, that's no problem because that's part of the planning process. Do you have any other contracts that are using ARPA funds? Or not, not, ARPA funds? Yeah, not at the present time. Uh, Historically, again, as a developer in the past, I've used American Recovery and Relief Act funds, but that was way back in, what, about 2008 or something. Our funds. Um, so again, my, my sense is that yes, they will be allowed, but I don't have that information specifically. Yeah. And right now, other counties are, are really in the same sort of stage as you are in the Montgomery. So Stratford County apparently is. It's a big slice of the. So we talk about it. Maybe we, we why don't we, maybe why don't you know why don't we consider this as part of our book? I think it is. If it fits, otherwise I don't think we're in a hurry to do this. I, can I ask another question? Yes. Yes. If we did a a one megawatt array as opposed to a two, um, yeah. does that then follow the logic that the return to pay for that is ten year is um, twenty years as opposed to the ten or well, sixteen? No, no, no. So does on, it a, take on a unit, it's a great question. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off if you wanted to follow that up. No, I think you got it. Like, how, um, how how soon will we get our return if we made a smaller array of a one megawatt as opposed yeah. to a two? On a unit basis, right, so regardless if it's one megawatt or five megawatts, uh, the return will be what I said roughly. You know, if you build a bigger array, five megawatts, maybe the price comes down on a unit basis. That dollar fifty a watt becomes a dollar thirty a watt, um, and maybe through our negotiation with vendors, we help get that dollar fifty a watt down to a dollar thirty a watt, and, or whatever that number is. But the economics that are derived, these are unit economics. The size is somewhat immaterial. It just it just impacts the magnitude of the spend not the return on a dollar basis. And I, I just wanted to add one other thought. Um, I did hear the gentleman ask, um, you know, if we don't have the ARA funds, is it more worth moving forward? Um, another thing to consider is the ARA funds are great because in many respects it's free money or it's money that could, you know, if you determine this is a good use for it, you can choose to spend it here. So there's opportunity costs. Um, but you can look at other modes of financing. So municipal bonding financing right now based on county credit are historic lows, and that can be 20, 30, 40 year funds at very low rate. So you may be able to structure a deal where you finance it using a bond or municipal credit, and the debt service is covered by the savings, right? So you create effectively a cash flow positive asset, creating value for the um, community with no outlay of capital, right? You're, you're, you're bonding, of course. Um, so there are ways to think through the financing that makes sense. And as a municipality, and this is why I really like uh, municipalities to own systems, because you have a lot of flexibility. People want to give you money. You have lines of credit. And so you have a lot more choices as to how you build and finance. And you really can leverage that um, with developers and finance entities. And, and that's a good thing. 
Commissioner Mayor? Yes. Uh, Steve, uh, I know you're, you're talking about the county owning it, but if the county owns it, don't we, don't we lose uh, the, the refunds, the rebates? It's a great question. And so I'll talk about this at a high level and I can dig in as much as you like. But let, let me just say there's effectively two ways to own a system or to, to have a system in the county. The first way is for you to own it. And the second way is for somebody else to own it, a lease or we call it a power purchase agreement. Now the notion that you're suggesting is that um, that $3 million system, you're absolutely right. There's a tax credit associated with that, 26%. So that's what, um, almost a uh, uh, million dollars. So if you had a tax, if you were a tax paying entity, you would benefit that you would get about a million dollars in tax credits plus some depreciation. But you can't do that because you're a municipal entity tax exempt. And so I think what you're suggesting is like, hey, we lose out on that value. It's 100% true. You do not get that value. However, in the pro forma that we generated, we consider that. So even without that tax benefit, you're getting uh, this seven to eight year payback, you know, 10% IRR, et cetera. And again, I believe those to be conservative numbers. So then some people say, well, we should do a power purchase agreement. We should let somebody else own a finance entity. They can take the tax credit, they'll pass those savings on to us, we benefit. Um, I don't believe that to be true. The entity that finances it, they typically take most of that value. Um, and we could do a comparison of what a pro forma for a cash purchase without the tax benefit looks like, which you have, versus the power purchase agreement, which would be, um, you know, an alternative structuring where somebody else takes that tax credit. And we've done this exercise, and my guess is um, you're going to see long-term cash flows for the county that are three, four, five x times that of a finance system, right? So foregoing the tax benefit still nets you three, four, five times the financial benefit for your constituents relative to somebody else owning mm -hmm. the system. But that's a financial decision for you all to make. Very important number to understand. Yes, agreed. Any more questions? Bob, how much of our power needs would that provide? Yeah. Uh, the county yeah. uh, consumes roughly 2.2, 2.3 megawatts per year. So we uh, could use... Unless somebody can convince me otherwise, I would like to see a system that, uh, that nets 100% of our usage. So say, say 2.5 megawatt system. Am I, am I incorrect? Um, I, I can comment on that quickly. We were advised, we sized this as a two megawatt system DC, which generates approximately 2.5 million kilowatt hours. So we sized the array to roughly meet 100% of your needs, which is how we approach this exercise based on input from the county. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and, and if I may just make one other point too about the financing mode. Um, those questions don't have to be answered up front. They can be done in parallel. And in fact, even as you go through an RFP process to procure the solar, you can ask developers and finance entities, how much would you charge me cash? And what does a finance solution look like? Right? So you don't have to make that decision now. You can actually base it on real numbers that you get down the road. And in fact, I would recommend that because at the end of the day, going in with a preconceived notion of what you should do, it's good to have a direction and an idea. And again, I believe the numbers will bear that owning the system is better for the county. Um, but hey, why not? You know, you, let's see what the market says, and then you all can, uh, as a group, determine what's best you know, to be steward of, of your funds. How much are we spending this year on electric? I remember. Is that broken it, down? It, uh, it's about, if you put it all together, it's about 14 cents a kilowatt hour that you're spending. So what does that come to? 
in terms of our projected usage for the year, what do we budget as? About 14 cents at 2.5 million kilowatt hours is about $350,000. So that you would be saving, avoiding about $350,000 a year for the next you would otherwise pay the utilities or the municipal, the, the electric company. And that's where those numbers, the seven to eight year payback is generated okay. again. So, but that would be for the next 25 plus years that we'd avoid that? That's right. After this is, it is paid for, it's effectively, you know, free money on an asset that's warrantied for 25 years. Uh, will operate for probably 40 years, right? So you're creating a power plant. And, and we can, I didn't do this calculation on this sheet, but we can say, um, how much does the system generate over the life of the system versus what did you pay? And that's what we call the levelized cost of energy, right? On a unit basis over time, how much are you paying a kilowatt hour? And I, don't quote me on this, but the number is probably close to four, five, six cents. Right, so say you're paying 14 cents over the life of the system on average, you're paying a lot less than that based on generation from this asset. Can I ask a question, Madam Chair? And we can do the calculations. Where does that 25 years come from? That's the warranty of the system? Yeah. So, that, that's correct. So, so when that's up, it I'm doesn't... Sorry. When that 25 years is up, that doesn't necessarily mean the system no longer works. It just means any maintenance to the system is at our cost. Well, yes and no. So there's different types of warranties. The panels themselves are warrantied for 25 years. You want to make sure that you buy from what we call tier one bankable companies, meaning there are large companies with strong balance sheets and strong equipment. Um, those will be graded at about a half percent a year, but they're warranted on their power production for 25 years. They're guaranteed to work. Now, you'll need to replace the inverter probably at 10, 15 years, and we put that into our model. That's a significant expense, which is calculated in the cash flow. And then because you own the system, there'll be some O&M, operations and maintenance involved. Solar just works. There's no moving parts. I mean, it is a very, once it's built, that's the risky part. You want to make sure it's built correctly. But once it's built, for example, solar on my home, I've had for almost 10 years. I've never once, I, I've done nothing. To, it just works, right? So when you have an own end contract and you make sure that they're clean and you check the connections and it's functioned, et cetera. So you put all these kind of controls in place, which is calculated in this model, and you have a very reliable asset. But the 25-year warranty number is on the panels, and the panels typically have useful lives of 35, 40 years. I mean, frankly, most systems haven't been around that long. So, but, you know, again, no moving parts. They just, it's on the space station, right? Like, they work. I guess I'm wondering if, whether there's a way to structure it so that we could use ARPA funds and then uh, somebody gets the benefit of the tax credit so that we get some value there as well. I think we should talk um, about it. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, if I heard the question correctly, is, is, is there some way for someone to own the system and you also get to use the ARPA funds? Um, I don't believe directly that you can give those funds to a developer who will own the system if you choose a power purchase agreement or a finance agreement. I think the financial argument would be that if you chose to give those, have a developer own and operate the system rather than the county, you could then use those funds for other things. And that would be a financial calculation. If the decrease the three, four, five times decrease in cash flow over time, uh, an appropriate trade off to use those relief funds for other infrastructure projects. And again, those are questions for you to add, answer based on you know financial calculations that we can help with. Okay. I don't have any other questions right now. Any other questions? 
Well, thank you very much for coming today. And I think it's something that we need to discuss and, and talk with Bob about. And uh, make up our minds. Great. Well, we're, we're happy to entertain any more questions about this, okay. too. And in the meantime, I think, you know, Steve can definitely be doing outreach and just talking to developers about this potential project so that we are progressing down that, okay. that first section of our proposal. Uh, the other thing is I'll reach out to um, the New Hampshire Association of Counties, um, you know, the DuPont group, and I'll ask them if they have learned anything more about the ARPA funds as well, because I'm sure they're looking at that on behalf of all the counties. Yeah, if they, if they could have some input on that, and especially on the question of, of you know, finding a way to monetize the tax credit benefits as well, um, that would be helpful. You know, there's got to be a creative way to structure this. Um, and it would be good to see what other communities are doing with, you know, along these lines. And they would be the ones to know. Uh, and if we could get more information, you know, by within the next week, because we've got to make some decisions pretty quickly on that funding, on that package, yeah. you know, that. Uh, I don't think we're in a position to do bonds quickly to fund the, fund a project like this. It would have to push to next year, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, again, you do have the benefit of already having an electric contract, a supply contract that's very lucrative, um, and that goes till December of 2023. So you do you do have time, right, right, um, to be planning for this. Do we have and, to? And sort of the cash outlay, if your target time frame is 2023 or frankly even 2022, you can make those milestone payments to any developer if you choose to move mm -hmm. forward. To match up with, you know, you, you pay very little up front, quite frankly, right? Like you, the, the, you don't really pay a lot of that money until the, until everything is done, permitting, interconnection, materials, order. So you have a lot of time to work on the financing, um, and you can do those activities in parallel, right? You can say, let's move forward, let's think about doing this, and answer those other questions. How can the, our, uh, the funds be used? Can we bond this? Um, but I would, I would strongly recommend, right, like if you think, again, I always go back to the fundamental question. On a cash basis, if you think, you know, uh, cash out of cash, no debt, no nothing, if you think these returns are appropriate, um, then you can move forward. And if you determine that any kind of along that pathway you want to, you know, pull the ripcord, you can. Um, so it's a discovery process where this is the most likely outcome. Yeah. I just wanted to make you aware, if you can't see it, that Dee Brown has offered some things in the chat. She says that Stratford County is working to complete this as well under ARPA. And it's her understanding that ARPA won't cover solar fields directly, but as a result of lost revenue. There is a bill in the Senate that is for infrastructure, green initiatives, and will most likely allow for the solar field if it passes. Most likely. So, <laughs> not quite there yet. Yeah. So. Well, we will find out more from the DuPont group. Mm -hmm. And we'll share that. So, a couple of action items. So, I'll just I'll redistribute the pro forma to everyone. Um, and we will find out more about the ARPA funds. And, and about this um, bill that's in the Senate right now. All right. All right. Would Thank you me. mind uh, inserting a couple of variables into that pro forma before you send it back? Sure. Uh, you have a 15 year uh, inverter replacement. Inverter replacement. Um, I think there should be one in 30 years as well. Fair. Yeah. Fair yeah. point. And uh, we have to consider lost pay revenue. Um, it's not a lot of money, but I think you need to consider it. And if you're looking at 10 acres, you're looking at about $12,000 annually in lost revenue. Okay. I think that needs to be in the, in the equation. 
Very good. We'll add that in too. Okay, well, thank you, commissioners, for your time. Thank you, Bob, for, for setting this up with us, uh, and, and Melissa, for your help, too. And uh, we will be getting answers back to you within the week. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Okay, so what do we have now? I we have a winter. We've gone um, public, beyond public. Okay. Um, I have one quick thing. Okay. Um, the uh, nursing home union requesting the first meeting. Yep. On August third, fourth, or sixth, and wanted to help you schedule that if you. So can. August third is when. Tuesday. And August fourth is Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. and the sixth is Friday. Six is Friday. Who's the representative for the nursing home? You are, Kim. No, you know. said you I wanted to be. You guys have figured that out. <laughs> Matthew said he wanted to be. Great. So it's Matthew. So Matthew should think about what date is convenient for him. Okay. I did it last year, so you should have some experience doing it this year. So the 4th is Wednesday? It is. That would work. Okay. But who's, will Dee be involved? Dee, Dee's on, so I assume she's going to be involved. I, I think it's the commissioner. It's usually the commissioner. I do. I didn't hear what you were talking about. I'm sorry. Sorry. I think it's usually the commissioners that set the management team, so it would be up to you if you have HR, the administrator, a commissioner. Yeah, that's usually. D, who would you, um, yeah. you would be on that committee, right? The, 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 for, for the union? Yes. Yeah. It's for the contract negotiation. Yeah, right. So who, who else would yeah. be, for the nursing home would be on your team? I don't know. I'd have to look and see who's interested. I'd have someone in uh, management, maybe one of the uh, nursing directors, and then um, uh, maybe Paula or someone else in more of the office capacity. Find out, okay. find out who's done it in past years. Uh, I would think Paula should be involved. Sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think she's a good asset to that. And then also someone maybe on the other side of nursing. So. Um, but I'll find out who we've had in the past and kind of find similar type of positions to have people on board. And who would be representing the union? This guy. The, the this union. guy. Chris Kilmer. Chris Kilmer is the staff Chris. representative. No, he but would do have. they have counsel involved? Always. And do we? Not at the beginning. Not at the beginning. So you agreed to be the commissioners? If, if you all think that's a good idea. I, I do. I, I mean, the nursing home is probably the easiest one. I'm not. I, I mean, if one of you want to do it, that's fine. I did it last year. I think it makes more sense for me to do the share. The yeah, because you guys are close. It's, I would not say that. I would think I have a better understanding of the sheriff's department. You do. And you guys will be I here. don't need a nursing home, so I have less of an understanding of that department. Do we have to do the jail this year, too? Or? No. 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 The nursing home is the only one. I we tried to do them. The sheriff and the nursing home are this year. I think the sheriff is this year. Yes. So. Yes. So Based I'm offering that. a deal. I'll take the sheriff. You, you take the nursing home. That sounds good. Okay. If that's okay with you, Madam Chair. It's fine with me. I did the, I did the jail and the nursing home last year. Wow. Is the nursing home every so year? So we do the nursing home every year? No, we try to do it two or three year. We tried to. And why did you do it last year? And because we were trying to, because we were trying to separate them out. Oh. So there's one every year, you know, one every year instead of. And there's two this year. Yeah. So. Okay. So, in, in, so it would be you and Chris from here would be. And is the fourth going to be okay for you? Is that what you wanted? I was thinking Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday the fifth? Okay. The fourth, yep. Okay. Wednesday's the fourth, right? Okay, yeah, because yeah, that's right Thursday, is right? Okay. And Thursday would be the fifth. Okay. okay. I'll work with the others. And okay. how long are we scheduling for this? Just 
going to be one of those. We're going to hammer the whole thing out, or no? It's just your first meeting. You'll have several. So we're looking at how much time and how what time? D, what's a good time for you? On the fourth. Any time. Any time would work for me. I I just set that aside. So okay. okay. It doesn't matter the time. Whatever works for for you folks. So. What would you prefer, Matthew? Morning, afternoon? Any time would work for me. I can make it work. So, like nine, ten? Nine to ten? Seven thirty in the morning? No, be... I'll work it out with you guys. Seven thirty would be too early. Okay. I'll be feeding goats. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Dee. We'll get back to you on Chickens. the time, but um, it's going to be on the the fourth. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for that. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we go into non-public under RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2, subsection... I think it's C. C. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, roll call vote. Commissioner Tassari. Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner McCarthy. Aye. Commissioner Platt. Aye. Thank you. Okay. 1044. <laughs> I need a motion to come out of. Conference. I make a motion, Madam Chair, that we come out of non-public under RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2, the subsections that we had, and that we seal all minutes of said subsections. Seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Are we unmuted? Looks like we're still muted. The recording is paused. All the sessions were under C. Is it star six? I think they were all under the same. You are unmuted. Do that again, or are we all set? Could do it again for posterity. Okay. Posterity, whatever it is. I make motion that we come out of non-public under RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2, subsection C. And I think we only had C. C. I think C. But cover them all. Seconded. Yeah. Employee. Yep. Seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, and that we seal the minutes of them. I didn't Seconded say that. Seconded sealing the minutes, too. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. You're now back in our regular meeting, and it is 120... 1242. Okay. Um, we, we have to do... Is there a round for you? Yep. Um, I guess we have to do have media comment. questions. Media questions? Having none? And I know we have some public input. Mr. Como? No? No public? Not at this time. Okay. No media? No okay, then I will take a uh, hmm. motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. 1243.